So these poor little birds are frying themselves on the electric line. And we hear them up at the farm and, <laughs> and the sparks fly. But they're at the rate of one or two a day. So uh, maybe their population will have balanced by the end of the year. We've got a second batch of compost tea in here and uh, first one was a great success, second one looks perfect too. We've been looking at that even though it's just uh, molasses and compost. There's no additional, oh and a bit of rock dust, there's no other things in there but it's pumping with light. So we'll do the other half of the garden beds today. So, new compost tea batch. Someone was talking about uh, looking at 400 times uh, magnification and not being able to get a reading because the objective was touching the slide but it shouldn't do your slide should be you should put a drop of any sample typically you would use the same sort of sampling method so a cubic centimeter of compost with five cubic centimeters of water or whatever it is but if you look down closely you should have half a mil off the slide this is a hundred objective and you wouldn't be able to get that down without hitting the slide but you you should be using cover slips and you should be pretty much flat otherwise you won't be able to get a sampling. So this is the compost tea and again <coughs> full of bacteria. This one is just what did we put in the recipe? Just seven liters of seven kilos compost yeah. and half a liter of molasses and nothing else. And a bit of rock dust. But this is full of life again. Uh, so this is from uh, one of the piles of compost that we um, combined with old compost, if you see old videos, it's not technically finished or complete, but it looks very full of life as you'd expect. This is a slit here. <laughs> Let's see, we'll zoom out, see if we can find a... We'll go down to 10 times, so that's 100 times magnification and see if we will need to turn the light down to monitor the amount of light coming through the eyepiece one nematode so the compost sample is good it's very full of silits and uh, flagellates as well as bacteria and nematode here so we're making biofertilizer, it's a biostimulant with N, P and K and all the other trace elements, maybe cow manure, milk, molasses, rock dust, things like this. So we've got a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and trace elements to stimulate plants to photosynthesize more, release more sugars and exudates to feed soil biology and get more nutrition. So we've tipped the old one into biochar to soak the biochar with uh, Biofertilizer. We have raw unpasteurized yogurt, very milky, but you want unpasteurized raw milk if possible. And we've got molasses, so we're going to mix those in a bucket. We haven't got quite enough yogurt, which is sugars for the bacteria, but we've got lots of sugar for the bacteria, so we're just going to have to go with that. Bread yeast we'll put in last to expel the uh, oxygen to kickstart this anaerobic digestion. We've got 18 litres of fresh cow manure because we've got a small bucket typically we make them in the 180 200 liter blue barrels this is a small barrel and we're going to seal it with silicon because we don't actually have a lock for this lid and put this air lock on all anaerobic digestions produce both carbon dioxide and methane and we don't want oxygen getting in just like making beer or something so we could add the manure now and start filling it with water we want the final product to be no higher than this so we don't get things bubbling over the top into the air tube and someone could record the recipe with the pen so that we can remember what went into it. Lock, watch the flashbacks. 
Okay, and apparently we've got more raw and pasteurised milk, so we're going to get the correct recipe. How much molasses are we putting in? Eight deciliters. Eight deciliters, that was the scale down recipe. Very nice, and this is a very tasty little mix. And how much more milk are we going to add to this? Anyone do the mathematics for the milk? What we're short of. Well, milk was also about the same. So, so we just took everything. So I would add like about as much milk as there was yogurt. So, okay. you could fill it up it's in here like even. There. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. Mmm. Wow. Oh, it's like treacle cake. Wow. Anything that you can do on farm to support your soil without needing external inputs is a winner in our book. Very nice. So this ferments in one to three months, depends on temperature, ambient temperature. You see it bubbling away in the corner. And once that's finished fermenting, it's ready to use. Uh, once the, uh, it's an anaerobic digestion, obviously, so the bacteria, once they've exhausted their food supply, they will die off. But everything, all the minerals and nutrients have been through the bodies of bacteria and now plant available and there's hormones and other biostimulants in here and that's really what this preparation is about it's stimulating photosynthesis and that allows the plant to secrete sugars to feed the soil food web which feeds it so we'll write the recipe down on here as we go eight yogurt and about eight milk so that's 1.6 liters yeah raw milk slash yogurt so bread yeast is used to expel oxygen in the, in the beginning phase. But in some ways this mimics the digestion going on in the cow's gut. In other ways, it doesn't. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and how much ash? You could add uh, two or three kilos of wood ash for some more trace elements. So we're putting uh, rock dust for the phosphorus source, manure as a nitrogen and the inoculin source. And lots of trace elements through molasses, could add kelp liquid, humic acids from worm castings, etc. And anything synthesized biologically is then plant available. I'm adding some bone meal just because we can. So you can put a few other things in here and it's all going to be synthesized nicely. So we could aim for that black line as a fill line, would be good. So we can add a bit more water. And then the only thing we're missing is rock dust, which we can buy rock dust. Uh, they use it in road building here, it's high in phosphorus. So granaceous uh, phosphoric rocks is what you're after there. That rock dust is going in. Very nice. So the recipe is completo. Yeah? So all that's left to do is put on the airlock. You ideally want to use a bigger bottle if you can, just so you can walk away and forget about it. Because if it dries up, obviously oxygen can go in. This will do, because we'll have it in the front yard where we see it all the time. And we're writing down the recipe we used. And we are now going to glob a lot of silicon around here just to make sure it's airtight. We'll know if it's airtight because if it doesn't start bubbling in a day or two then air's coming out the size. So before you put the lid on let's put silicon around here in large quantity just to make sure we get it airtight. And we'll stick the lid on put a heavy rock on it and then we're done. Now this lid is missing the rubber seal and you would have the metal clamp to hold it on. So add a lid in. That's fine as long as it's airtight. We don't really mind. Yeah, it's heavy enough. Cool, all set to go. So we'll come back and see if it's bubbling later. What is this for, for the Rico? This is for selling loose veg at Rico. So what is the concept? We're gonna start offering veg in a different way? Yeah, so instead of having uh, 10 different prices for 10 different veg, it's gonna be 30 crowns for one unit, one bag, one bunch, for example. And if you want four, it's 100 crowns. So you get a 20 crown discount right there. So for example, in here, is portioned out, for example, 30 crowns worth of peas, 30 crowns of mespin, 30 crowns of kale. And you can't see everything that's in here because it's so full. Charred, different carrots, beets, 
Um, so if you were to purchase, so for example, that's a 30 crown bunch of carrots. There's a 30 crown fennel that's based on weight. Oh, that, don't miss out on the turnips. And if you were to, if, if you were to buy each of these 30 crown bunches, keeping in mind you get four for a hundred, this would cost you 300 crowns. This is smaller than the small veg box, which costs 200 crowns. So, so, so what you're saying? What is I'm saying is we're offering loose veg if people want to just have peas. But ideally, what would ha what people would see is that there's a huge, huge value, like 10 to 20 euro value, to get the small box or the big box. We're just going for pure abundance, so all, pure, all over. Pure abundance all over. We have it in the ground. We're giving it to people. We're offering it to the restaurants. Everyone's happy and healthy. Love it. Yeah. So 30 crowns bunch. Yeah, these are all 30 crown Four values. For 100. Yeah, they're just a uh, different customer base here. The veg boxes are becoming more popular, but there are still quite a lot of people that want to choose their vegetables uh, on a daily or um, every other day and not necessarily get the mystery of, of uh, 15 varieties once a week. So we're catering to everybody. Very nice. Good idea, and we'll see how that goes. So the yeah. people are selling this model, it works quite well. Very nice. So this is making calphos. This is a calcium and phosphorus reclamation from our eggshell. Could be done with bones of animals, could be done with lime, things like this. But we're basically charring these eggshells and smashing them as they char, and we will end up with black and white uh, particles. The white ones are relatively high in phosphorus, the black ones are relatively high in calcium. And then we'll react them five parts eggshell to one part, uh, sorry, five parts vinegar to one part eggshell and it will go through an extreme bubbling reaction and the resulting liquid can ferment for a few weeks and we can store it indefinitely as a phosphorus, soluble phosphorus form that we can spray on plants, particularly when they're coming into uh, fruit. Fruit development is a uh, time when plants need a lot of phosphorus. So I'd keep smashing that as we go. It doesn't have to be powder, but we will powder it when it's charred to get more surface area for the reaction. Okay, right. eggs are done. So you see some particles are white, some are black. It's very hot in here. We're now going to powder this. Uh, how long did it take to char them up? A few minutes? Ten minutes perhaps. Five, ten minutes. And then we powder them and we'll go and uh, cause some chemical reactions. So you want to pour it Got some surface area in the broken up eggshell, and we're just working out how much we have. So that we can, we're going to use five parts vinegar to one part eggshell, and then we've got a nice clay pot that we can use for the reaction. We want all the dust in there. Ideally, you would take a mortar and pestle and uh, really get the surface area up. So we've got four fifths, uh, four ninths just to make it easy. Uh, so we whack that in there and we want to put basically two yogurt pots. I'd say two. As it gets bigger at the top. And this will start to foam and react if it went well. Never done it with apple cider vinegar. This is uh, premium organic apple cider vinegar. Normally we use the Etica, the sort of clear spirit vinegar. This will start to react now in here, and it might start it's bubbling like up. Baking powder and yeah. So once this is completely reacted, we would then strain it and bottle it off and let it ferment with a cap on for a few weeks and then you can store it indefinitely as a soluble calcium and phosphorus source. <laughs> holiday time! Look, Marie's got a holiday visor! <laughs> the core team are having a weekend away in a very nice looking house. And we're looking after the farm. <laughs> This is my favorite song! <laughs>